Hello. Welcome to the sixth part of the Necromancer's Evolutionary Traits. A special thanks to my channel members for supporting me. And if you want to support, you can join my channel membership or Patreon for as low as $1. Thank you very much. Let's begin. At the beginning of this part, we see that. His father says, take it, Andreas. As long as you have it, you'll be recognized as the true lord of the Cromwell household. Don't be burdened by this father of yours anymore. Please, be happy together with Amy. Everything around him disappears. He thinks, I. Black Mage is surprised. The magic barrier starts to break. Andrea's hand comes out. His barrier completely breaks. Andrea's is standing there. Black Mage says, You, how did you? Escape from my curse of sloth? A system window appears in front of him. He thinks, I'm fed up. System window says, Mikado Kaneshiro Andrea's Cromwell. 100% synchronization rate achieved. Makoto Kaneshiro's exceptional combat talent has been acquired. Andreas says, This curse of sloth of yours is nothing but a game that simply stimulates one's own traumas. Or should I say, that the caster's abilities are lacking? He says, What did you just say? Andreas says, Now, what are you going to do? There's no way this will work on someone like me, who has received training from the special forces. Black Mage gets angry and says, You. Shut up. And attack him. Andreas dodges the attack. He thinks, he's not that strong, but I can't end this without using my necromancy. It should be fine. No one's watching. Black Mage comes to him. He says, who the hell are you? Andreas says, I will show you right now. System says, beginner necromancy skeleton summoning. Black Mage is really surprised. System says, 23 corpses have been detected. The skill level is insufficient. Nine corpses will be activated. Beginner necromancy, skeleton summoning has been successful. Black Mage says, a necromancer. The congregation already knew? Andreas thinks, so there really is a black magic congregation. He misunderstood it, but I can use it to shake him off. Seven skeletons common. And two common skeleton soldiers have been summoned. I've been entrusted with recovering the page of sloth in the name of the congregation. With the likes of skeletons? You think you can match the power of sloth? Black Mage attacks the skeletons and destroys them. Andreas is really surprised. He activates the Earth Shield. Black Mage says, Stop pretending. Andreas says, Nickel. Black Mage says, Those are nothing but small fries. Nickel. Cuts his attacks. Black Mage is really surprised and thinks, I can't believe it. A mere skeleton cut my dark spear? This guy. Black Mage brings out something really strong. And hits the Nickel. He bring out a lot more of those. Andrea sees that and thinks, the page of sloth. To think that the likes of you is making me use my precious collected sloth power. Some really strong monster starts to come out of the ground. He says, you will pay with your life for disrupting my plans. Nickel as Andrea's barely dodges his attack. Andrea thinks, I can react if it's only this fast. And Nickel is durable enough to withstand his attacks. Nickel is blocking all his attacks. Black Mage says, die quietly. Andreas is dodging his attacks and thinks, the attacks have gotten even faster. He's having trouble controlling his strength. That means he still didn't fully master the power of sloth. Go for his blind spot and strike him. Nickel. Nickel disappears. Black Mage sees Andreas and thinks, he's a persistent one. Andreas says, you bastard. He was someone I just got my hands on. Black Mage says, my bad, but don't worry. I'll send you to the same place where the skeleton is now. Farewell. Nickel appears behind Black Mage through a portal. Nickel cuts Black Mage into two pieces. Andreas thinks, I thought about who could be the one doing this. But to think that the Baron Butler was a Black Mage, that means that somehow the Baron is involved with this as well. Anyways, Andreas picks up the page of Sloth. System says, Apocalypse Codex 7th Chapter Diligent Sloth Mana Recovery Rate 321%. Andreas thinks, what should I do with this? It's not like I can just walk around with it. That's right, there's also Nickel. He gives the page of sloth to Nickel and says, take care of this for now. Let's put it first in the summoning storage and then think about what to do with it later. Even though the caster died, so why isn't the barrier disappearing? It's fine for me if they don't manage to come out. But then I'd have to explain to survive if I came back alone. This barrier is different from the one I was in. Andreas touches the barrier. He gets sucked into the barrier. Andreas is in Vivian's dream, he says. Is this little one Vivian Belcan? She says, a ghost? Or is it a demon? 
the chair is talking? Andrea says, I am neither a ghost nor a demon, Vivian. I am a fairy who came to rescue you. Andrea thinks, it's nice that I came here, but what the hell am I doing? Be patient. This is all an act. I'm a fairy. The first thing I saw when I came here was the young Vivian being slapped in the face by some noble woman. Because nobody can see me, investigating was really easy. So I found out that woman was Count Belkin's second wife, as well as this household's background. The Belkin household is famous for its swordsmanship, so the Lord wanted a son that could become its successor. However, because Vivian mother didn't give birth to a male heir, a tragedy began. Why did I have you? I should have never given birth to you. Since even her own mother had abandoned her, there wasn't a single person left to protect Vivian. Because of the loneliness and mistreatment she was suffering, a seed of insanity was planted. And as the time passed, the more she succumbed to the insanity. To the point she killed all of the teachers and assistant teachers in the fifth year meeting by herself. She says, Mr. Fairy? Andreas thinks, I can't make you forget your past. But I can give you a hand in trying to overcome it. She starts to cry and says, Did you really come to help me? He says, Why are you crying, Vivian? She says, I haven't had anyone try to help me before. Andreas thinks, I really don't know how to deal with kids. He says, you have a special talent, Vivian. It's just that nobody here has recognized it yet. She says, I am special? He says, yes. You have a very special and excellent talent for swordsmanship, but I haven't even touched a sword yet. This fairy here knows a lot of things, so just trust me. She says, but I am always getting scolded. He says, it's fine. I will be by your side. And in exchange, promise me, that you won't tell anyone about me. She says, I promise. After that, Andrea stays with her. Teach her swordsmanship. And other stuff. When she gets sick, he sits by her side. One month later, Vivian is calling him saying, Where are you, Mr. Fairy? I came to the promised location just like you told me. She says, Are you going to be teaching me swordsmanship today too? Andrea says, You can't go around screaming about it, Vivian. I said that nobody can find out about my real identity. She says, so you were over there. He see us. Then, let's start the training. And just like that I spent a whole month here with Vivian. Vivian is training. He thinks, with my exceptional grade combat talent, I tried to give as much advice as I could to her. It synergized really well with her. She is truly a genuine prodigy. Those shouldn't be the movements of a brat that has only been learning swordsmanship for a month. Andrea says, that's why you've been getting praised by your swordsmanship instructor. She says, Andreas says, what is this? I thought she was a pretty confident kid. What's wrong, Vivian? Your movements were perfect. No matter how much I get praised by my teacher, Mr. Fairy won't show himself to me. That's... Andreas says, I'm a fairy. That's why, haven't I told you? She says, is it because I'm a bad child, so you won't show yourself to me? I thought that if I did my best and got acknowledged. But even though I tried so hard, you still haven't shown yourself to me. She says, it's useless no matter how hard I try, isn't it? Someone comes there and says, you've surprised me, Vivian. Count Belkan? Count Belkan says, to think that you have such talent. He says, show me that swordsmanship once more. She is really surprised and she says, yes sir. She shows it again. Count Belkan says, as expected of one with Belkan's blood. That was incredible. Belkan leaves. She says, Mr. Fairy. That was the first time my Tahir has ever praised me. To think that even I could dream of such a thing. She says, I really want to stay with Mr. Fairy more, but the time for me to wake up has come. Andreas thinks. So, she finally woke up. Because of you, I found the path to go forward. She says, I think I should follow this path and not stay stuck in the past. He says, Vivian Belkan, our promise. Please keep it. She says, I will, forever. Thank you so much, Mr. Fairy. She says, you showed me a good dream. He says, if it's Vivian, she can do it. The barrier breaks and Vivian is on the ground. He thinks, especially if it's the same Vivian from the dream. Baron Balaric is the one behind the incident in Thrym Village. Ivy learned of this fact after breaking the barrier on her own and joining up with us. Ivy says, hey, big head, cut this bastard's head off and try not to scar his face. We're going to the Baron's castle right now. We started moving immediately. Her killing intent is terrifying. Christopher is dead, and Hazar is missing. 
No surprise there. Ivy is hitting the guards. They says, who are you? She says, put your swords away. Ivy says, I'm Ivy Clare, assistant professor of Rodlin Academy's night faculty. From this moment on, anyone who defends Baron Balleric is guilty of treason and will be executed immediately. Andreas thinks she's not going to just kill them all, is she? She is holding Black Mage's head. She says, recognize him? He's the one responsible for what happened in the village of Thrym. Take us to the Baron immediately. He says, you're here. So, Evan is dead. This is my son, Edel. He should have died of illness a few months ago. Andreas says, I see, so that's why he dabbled in black magic. He says, while I was looking around for medicine, a robed man visited me. He said he had a way to help my son. He says, I asked him to do whatever it took to save my son's life. Even if that meant leaving him in this miserable state. He says, Edel. Please forgive your foolish father. Ivy says those words. Say them to the people you and your butler have killed. She threw him. Guard says, my lord. Ivy says, why are Yoan just standing around there like a fool? Go call the investigation team right now. And get rid of that monster in the back. Andreas uses a rock spear. Vivian sees him. He screams. Ivy and Vivian are confused. She says, Oi, big head. Why did you do that without my orders? Andreas says, A creature born of black magic should be dealt with immediately, before it makes any sudden moves. Besides, any important information must be in the Baron's hands. Am I wrong? Afterwards, the Baron was arrested and immediately taken away by the Imperial Investigation Team. When we returned to the Academy, Vivian and I were also called in to give our testimony. It is clear that there was colluding with a black mage. They says, bring the Baron. We'll hold another hearing. Thank you for your time. You two can go home now. He thinks, Baron Balleric, the consequences of getting involved with black magic will surely be severe. Andreas thinks, but you should be thanking me. If I hadn't killed your son, he would have suffered the hell of being experimented on by a bunch of insane wizards. Vivian says, Mr. Fairy must have figured it all out, right? About the Baron's son. She says, you didn't want five to let him live to suffer, did you? Andrea says, fairy? What are you talking about? I almost spoke like a fairy. She says, but you sound just like him. Lucia comes running and says, Senior Andreas, are you done with your business? Andrea says, yeah, they said the hearing's over. She says, well, anyway, check this out. Senior, you're famous. She says, it's only been a short time since we unveiled the potion. Andrea says, for real, even though all I want is some peace and quiet. Lucia says, right? I heard you're getting a reward. Treat me to a meal, please. Andrea says, no, the reward money has to be split. She says, isn't she the one who's on the news along with you, senior? Andrea says, and you only noticed her now? She's Vivian Belcan, a third year. Night faculty student. Greet her. She greets her. She says, back to the story. You're the one getting the money anyway, aren't you? So, let's go out to dinner and celebrate the success of our potion production. But the jury's not out yet. We'll have dinner some other time. She says, all right. Anyway, I'll see you at the Magic Tower tomorrow. Andrea says, yeah, I won't forgive you if you're late. After that we see at Rodlin Magic Tower. And Dyers is holding Lucia and says, I knew it would end up like this. I was a fool to trust you. A man at the tower says, Andrea's Cromwell and Lucia Everlast, correct? Andrea says, yes. He says, follow me. He says, the space in the magic tower is constantly changing, so please watch your step. You hear that? Now, wake up and walk properly. Lucia says, I'm awake. So, Vivian, the senior I met yesterday, what is your relationship with her? Andrea says, nothing in particular? She says, oh well, but we should definitely go out for dinner. Andrea says, you're rich, why do you keep begging me to treat you? Someone says, I see you two are not nervous at all. How cheeky. He thinks, that voice, it can't be. The owner of the Rodlin Magic Tower? Brack Alvin? Cromwell Scroll of Information Great Sins World Outlook. Magic Tower is a group of engineering wizards who contribute to civilization. It started with the Amon Levitation. A group of engineering wizards who contribute to civilization. It started with the Mana Levitation. Train. But they develop various products, such as mana lamps and fertilizers. The more famous a magic tower is, the more famous a magic tower is, the more money it receives from the government and nobility. 
The sixth part of the necromancer's evolutionary traits ends here. If you want to see more, please subscribe and like. And if you want to support me financially, you can join my channel membership or Patreon only for $1. Channel membership joining link and Discord links are in the description if you want to support me. And a special thanks to all my channel members for supporting me. Thanks for watching.